Debbie, can we note that we have three board members in attendance this evening uh, and Ms. Wilson unfortunately not able to be with us. We will need to elect a chairman pro tem for tonight's meeting. Uh, so we will field a motion for that at this time. I make a motion that Mr. Johnson on behalf of Ms. Wilson um, act as president tonight in her absence. There's a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? A second. It's motion and a second. Is there any discussion around that item? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. Okay. We do have an agenda before us this evening. Uh, is there anything that any board member would like to add to the agenda tonight? Yes, Mr. Johnson, I, I would like to add a discussion item for the board. Um, tonight on the discussion for dress code policy. Okay. So if we could uh, possibly have a 5A item added uh, on behalf of Mr. Irving for discussion. Dr. Adolfich, do you have any additions to the agenda this evening? I do not. Okay. All right. With that in consideration, we'll take a motion on the agenda as amended. We have a motion to accept the agenda. I make a motion that we accept the agenda as amended. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Right. We have the motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the agenda at this time? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. And there are none. Next item is item D, board member appreciation week proclamation. Where the school board members are entrusted with the oversight of the maintenance, development, and operation of Mississippi's public education districts and whereas school board members are responsible for ensuring the structure which provides a solid foundation to meet the educational needs of all students and to prepare for the future success, whereas school board members are strong advocates for public education and are responsible for communicating the needs of the school district to the stakeholders and the stakeholder expectations to the district, whereas school board members are as a voice which enables each community to preserve local management and control of our public schools, where a school board service is an honor which carries significant responsibility to students, district staff, fellow board members, and large community, and whereas school board members are responsible for ensuring that every available resource is identified and applied in order to maximize student success, now for I, Tate Reeves, Governor of the State of Mississippi, do hereby proclaim the week of February 8th through 12th, 2021, a school board member recognition week. Thank you. <clears throat> we appreciate that sentiment for sure. Also, the, the kind gifts that were made by the students. Uh, it's always, it's one of the best meetings of the year, really, to see these crafts that they take time out uh, to, to show their appreciation to us. Uh, we truly appreciate that. Then item E, we have a COVID update from the leadership team. Yeah, there's basically, there's two documents that I want to share with you. Uh, and one of the documents is last month, which you have both of them. But if you look, last month we probably recorded our highest number of percentage of quarantine students in the district. We were at 8.5% for the entire month. And then a uh, number of students who actually had COVID was 1.49%. So, you know, that's kind of a high number for us in the month of January. That was the highest number we've had during the course of the year. So we've been paying very close attention to it. But as we move to uh, this month, there is a uh, reduction in the number of cases that we've had and the number of quarantined students. And that's been reduced down to first week positive students 0.336%, quarantine students 1.7%. 
So those numbers have come down. Uh, we will continue to monitor the numbers, let you guys know if any, you know, have any other spikes. We have had some schools that have had some close calls as it relates to number of students in classrooms. Uh, but we've been very fortunate not to have to shut any grade levels or anything like that down this year. We're hoping we can continue that trend. And we also feel strong that if we continue to have people being vaccinated, that that's going to help us to minimize the risk of future COVID infections. The other thing that is associated with that, because it runs parallel to what we're doing, tomorrow we'll be launching our uh, workforce success posters for every school, for every classroom. And I just wanted to show you briefly, you have the uh, document on your desk uh, to look at. Mr. Rogers, if you can pull it up. You can look back here if you want to see a larger version of it. But because we're in the time of COVID, we're still very active in trying to accomplish several things as a district. And we're just going to quickly flip through. But it basically gives you our background. We did uh, interviews with business and industry, local business, local industry. But we also went to several states, uh, and mostly during vacations. But we were asking questions about what can we as a school district do better to provide a better service to our local community as it relates to having children ready to complete college, complete workforce training, and go into the workforce. So we've kind of documented every aspect of that. And then if you look to the next page, it shows you all the different events that we've had. And what I really want to draw your attention to is the amount of participation that we're having in those events. Uh, it's very well received. The bottom event is something we've been able to do, and this year we did it virtually. But uh, our juniors all actually go through a interview process and there's a selection of the top interviewed students. So every junior in the school district has been interviewed over the course of the last three years. Two times it was in person, one time it's been virtual. To go to the next page, uh, of course we became an ACT work ready community. We're very fortunate to share the governor's award for that uh, teamwork. We also had the Seal of Literacy, with the first district in the state of Mississippi to be recognized with the Seal of Literacy. We've got multiple offerings for our students uh, to be able to do things that are very unique. The unmanned aerial systems. Uh, our, we've opened a branch of Singing River Federal Credit Union at Pascagoula High School. Uh, our culinary arts, our cybersecurity, uh, logistics, just a wide array. And we have among the highest number of offerings in the state of Mississippi for vocational students in our CCTI. When you talk about the who, that basically breaks down the different interviews that we've done. Myself, a good bit of my leadership team have all participated in these interviews, and there's been 104 completed. Okay, Stoney. This is a breakdown of the posters that students will have in their schools tomorrow. And uh, we have one in Spanish, one in English, and it talks about from the early childhood level what a successful person looks like, and it talks about all the qualities of successful people. Then as you move up to what a successful professional looks like, that goes from our fifth through our 12th grade, and we're trying to help our students to be able to understand the important things that these employers want. And that entire rubric was created as a result of the interviews that we conducted with business and industry and local community members and lawmakers uh, as it related to trying to develop a great rubric for our students, so that's the product of that. Our career pathways, uh, are listed on the far right at the bottom right corner. And that document actually outlines everything that we're doing, but the most important thing is the number of senior level internships that are currently available. We had uh, nine students who received um, CNAs, Certified Nursing Assistant Certificates last year. We now have over 25 students that are currently in that program. And I recently did a video with Singing River Hospital where that's gonna expand as much as 1,000 students and they're going to use a wing of the hospital to train across a bunch of disciplinary areas in the medical field. Uh, next page. Uh, this is a breakdown of our We've Got It commercials. Uh, Ms. Damon, uh, Ms. Anglin, and I were able to go accept an Addy Award. This is something that's homegrown within the district. You've seen them on WLX. You've seen them on our social media. But we actually have four of those. Then if you look at our partnerships, we have a very strong partnership with English Shipbuilding. We have students that are going straight into the workforce. There's our Singing River Health Systems, and there's where we cut the brand new lab ribbon for the welding lab, but we're also looking at expanding our welding program to Goche as well to have a facility there. Okay? 
And then we also do something very unique in Pascagoula, but it's expanding across the state. I've actually spoke statewide about this. And this is uh, our higher up program where we have underemployed or unemployed uh, community members who are looking to get better jobs with better wages. And so we're, as we speak right now, we have people training and in courses from English Shipbuilding in a multitude of areas. And we've employed 136 people in our local shipbuilding industry just from that program here. I and mean, if you look to your far right, uh, the new project in place for our school district is we're conducting interviews. We conducted an interview today with one of our young men who's working in Los Angeles, California on television. And we are actually gonna interview 50 different graduates. We've interviewed 37 now, 37, so we have 13 to go. And what we'll do from that is we'll build a rubric, but all these uh, interviews go back to our ninth grade career classes so our students can relate to students who actually went to school here and what they say they need to be focused on as opposed to adults always telling them what they need to be focused on, okay? And then finally, there's a letter there that kind of explains the whole thing. But I just want to let you guys know we'll be launching that tomorrow. It'll be comprehensive throughout our schools. Every teacher will have posters in their class. Every school will have large posters in their hallways. Uh, and it's just something to help our young people develop good habits. Thank you very much for that update and great program, community partnerships. It's, it's been very positive so far. Appreciate the, the hard work from everyone. The next item on the agenda, item F, is the election of school board officers. Um, at this point, I'd like to make a motion that Mr. Johnson is president, um, replacing Ms. Wilson um, for the upcoming year um, as board member. Okay. There's been a motion put forward. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second there. Is there any discussion? And I guess just for some of the general public that may be uh, watching, uh, it's not just a happenstance. Board policy dictates uh, around the, the legal schedule of, of appointment and election, what time of year we, we elect new school board officers, uh, and we, we opt to do that uh, in accordance with that and, and following a certain pathway. So that's why this is on the, the table tonight. Um, do we have any further discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. And there are none. But at this time, also need to entertain a motion for the incoming board secretary. I'd like to make a motion that Mr. Um, Keelan Irving be the incoming um, board secretary for the upcoming year. Okay. We have a motion there, uh, and I will second that motion. So we have the motion and the second. Uh, is there any discussion on that motion? All right. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. And there are none. Okay. On to item G. We have uh, Dr. Dimitropoulos here with us this evening. So our mayor for the city of Pascagoula. Um, to speak with the, the board tonight. Welcome, for starters. Thank you for, for joining us at the meeting. And by all means, uh, at this time, you have the floor. Great. It, thank you so much for um, allowing me to be here with you tonight and putting me on the agenda. I'd like to introduce Michael Silverman, our city manager, and uh, he's come as well. Look, I, I just want to first say thank you for the hard work that you all do, your commitment of your time, your commitment to the community, and the the, you can see the real dividends that it pays with the work that you've done and the work that the staff's done to have really an excellent school system. Um, this, um, this visit comes out of a kind of a sense of I want to kind of create more communications between our two boards, uh, the city council and the school board. Um, we were having a discussion about appointment of new school board members, and so it struck me as how little of the things that the superintendent just brought up that I actually know. And, um, you know, I 
about a year ago, I was campaigning, and I knew that we had three schools in the top 20 out of the uh, 600 odd schools across the state, and that was very important to me. And you know, the things that draw people here, other than a safe city and having a job, the number one thing is having great schools. And so, this is critical that that we have a really good school system. And I know you work hard at that. So, I'd like to. What I'd like to do is invite. Um, the president-elect to come and see if he could give us a report at our uh, city council meeting next Tuesday if he's available. And what I'd like it to focus on is a couple of things, and this is purely informational, but I'd like you to speak to like the performance metrics. In other words, how do we compare our school both with other schools in the state and nationally I don't really know what they are. I, I don't know if they're ACT scores, or the number of National Merit Scholars, or there's some other kind of scoring system, but it would be important that people know where we are positioned as opposed to other schools. A second area that I'd like you to speak to, and I got a good overview of that uh, just with the superintendent's report, is differentiators, and by that I mean what sets us apart as a school system as opposed to other schools in our area that people may say, you know, look, I'll meet, move up in the county because we think that school is better or we'll move to um, in the west part of the county. And by that I mean some of the things you talked about like the job readiness programs or college credit type classes our technology, our beautiful facilities. So what are our differentiators that make us different and set us apart? The third area I'd like to, you to speak to is just, um, you know, our, best, our biggest resource within our school systems, not necessarily our technology or our facility, but it's our teachers. And so how's our teacher retention rate look? Uh, how does that compare with other school districts across the state or across the nation? And then the fourth area, just how do you, what are some of your goals for the future? What are some of the, you know, the challenges that you see? I know we've had a lot with COVID and that's kind of, you know, this is a, well, I don't want to say anomaly, but kind of different than what we normally see. But what are some of our challenges and what are our, some of our goals? And, you know, that could be, doesn't have to be a long extended conversation, but just something that I'd like you to address. And then... Finally, how can we help to promote you better, meaning our school system? How can we work together? Because, as I say again, it's critical for our city and our community to have a great school system. And I just don't think people know all the great things that's happening within our school system. I think it's uh, you know, a knowledge vacuum. And so maybe there's other ways that we can both jointly promote a lot of the great things. I know you have your own Facebook page and you know technology, the way you push out your information, but we'd like to be part of that too. So that's why I'm here and I'd love for y'all to be a, a part of that, so. <laughs> Pardon me. Again, wanna thank you for coming for sure. And we do have some data that that we want to give you before you leave this this evening uh and just being quite candid uh glad glad you're here that a lot of phone calls uh from from community members and and employees uh regarding some of the statements that were made uh in the previous uh meeting and and how they were received and and employees wanting it wanting it cleared up as well you know so that that and again give you all this data and what plan is to to discuss possibly with Mr. Sessoms, uh, as I was looking forward, trying to plan towards the same thing. How do we come together and how do we how do we do this right? Um, the hurdle I want to make sure neither one of us trip over. There's several AG opinions r regarding that type of 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 information reporting structure across different branches, and I just want to make sure we're not setting ourselves up to trip on one of of those. And if not. Let's let's get on board and, and do it. Um, but as far as teacher retention, uh, if you look from from 2000, basically 2002 up until now nationally, uh, you're going to run on average uh, a fluctuating 15 to 17 and a half nationally on average. Uh, this past year, um, we were at a 13.5 a is where we were. So below that, um, you know, due to 
personnel uh, and, and legal reasons, uh, we cannot divulge what individuals are departing for what reasons and things like that. But it's my personal opinion, and I've shared it publicly, as long as I'm at or below average for these statistics, it, the, the reasoning is really not of detriment to me, right? Because I, I don't feel like uh, there, there's a big issue there. Um, and, and to the accountability in state, um, we have a Mississippi Department of Ed makes our accountability model. And right now it's an ABC type ranking system. Uh, with all the, the issues that have been presented to us with COVID, they have for this school year done a hold harmless where they're not going to grade, not going to rank schools. However, um, <clears throat> prior, when we go back to last year, we had a B rated district where the state average is a C. Uh, and then we had what was our highest uh, performance uh, ever with I think it was seven A schools there were only two C schools across the district um, and then if we want to look at a so so again the best uh, state accountability rating that we have ever had as a district um, if we want to look nationally because different different states handle accountability different ways then I do believe yeah we we look around at graduation <clears throat> ratings and things like that and uh, we have been right on par, uh, a little bit above by a little bit, I mean a percent or so, a little bit below a percent or so national average for graduation rate for our students. Uh, the data that, that we have there, you know, just to help with some of the upfront questions, you know. Um, so yeah, COVID has been has been a big uh, thing that a hurdle that our, our educators have, have had. State, federal level, we've received some assistance that we are very grateful for. Um, we've been able to do a lot with our nursing staff. Because of that, we've been able to do a lot with technology and uh, give certain at-risk students uh, and the, the teachers the equipment they need to try to continue this process because we all know, especially in the early ages, if, if we fall into a, a divot here, it becomes increasingly more difficult to get ourselves out. Um, facility uh, expansions, very, very proud of the things we've been able to do district-wide. district, district -wide. Um, So again, we do have some of that data that we want to go ahead and, and get you with tonight. So you'll have that, Dr. Adolfich, we have that information prepared. And then we're going to be reaching out in the very near coming days. Um, insurance, can we get that going and let's line that up. And, and yeah, we appreciate the, the opportunity to help promote and that's what we want uh, the general public to know what's what's really going on as well you know and and help help get that information to you in, in whatever ways that that we can um comments other other board members leadership team look at for me at the bottom at the end of the day it's just about communications sure and you know, the, the more we communicate and the better we communicate, the better off our community will be. And we can actually get to what the, you know, what the facts are. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like to operate. I'm, you know, what I do is very data driven. And so, you know, I don't like to focus, um, you know, work out of assumptions or false information. Right. And so whenever I hear something, I want to make sure it's validated and so that's what prompted my you know address to your council and coming to this meeting so i appreciate your openness about it you know hopefully everybody in the community can understand and know all the good things that's going on in the pascagoula gauche school district and at, that would be my primary goal is just how do we communicate it better and how we all know where we stand and then you know every Every organization has challenges and goals, and we work on things and, you know, what those are so that we can work together. So mm -hmm. having said that, I hope that, it's that you're able to come and things work out. We'd love to have you be our guest. Oh, yes. Thank you very much for that and be working diligently toward that. Um, you know, and, and I guess just one more aside that I didn't mention before um, that is, 
available on website that would work to maybe get a, a thousand foot overview for. The way we typically drive in relation to goals is a, a district, uh, every five years, uh, we invite community members from various industry, uh, some educators and others. We come together on a strategic planning team, uh, segregated into academics, technology, transportation, sports, and uh, culinary uh, student health and well-being. And, and we devise the, the goals for that subsection over a five-year time frame. What does that budget look like? How do we get from, from A to B? And then the administration takes that, that feedback, brings it to the, to the board, and that's, in a sense, what generates the action plan. But again, I try to get a, a, a high-level overview of that because it's a lot of data and um, be, be in touch on, on how we can get together and make this happen and, and be glad to help clarify, you know, all these questions and the information that you guys have. But we appreciate you, you coming this evening to talk to us and thanks for the work that you guys are doing. Thank you so much. And one last thing I'd just like to say, I, I've been, um, you know, this, the Fine Arts Center is such a, um, well, a, a spectacular um, venue that we have within our city and I'd love for I've been working with Brandon Wilson and um, you know trying to I'd love us to host some kind of big event here where it kind of gets introduced to the community maybe when the COVID thing kind of gets um, you know quiet it down a little bit it'd be great to have something that would really draw a huge crowd maybe a play maybe a show maybe a variety show like Thacker Mountain or something that would really draw a big crowd so I'm hoping that, you know, when we all work together, we can do that because this is just a fan. People don't realize how fantastic the facility is. So anyway, that's another yeah. thing I'd like to work together on as well. Exactly. And we, um, it's, we've been chomping at the bit. We had invitations there and stamps put on and ready to fly the, the grand opening. And then here we are. Um, and as, as beautiful as the facility is and the work that went into it, I know uh, not just in your role as city leadership, but in your profession, understanding and that, that safety of our public is paramount to, to all. So absolutely, as soon as a uh, situation presents itself, we are looking forward to being able to open these doors and really let the community come in and see the great things that are going on here because it is state-of-the-art, beautiful facility. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, me. Doctor. Superintendent Rodolfich, do we have any other visitors that have signed in this evening? We do not. Okay. Item two would be the consent agenda. We're grouping several routine items into a single consent agenda. Any board member may request that any or all items on the consent agenda be removed and considered as a separate item. If no such request is made, all items on the consent agenda may be approved by a single action of the Board of Trustees. <clears throat> consent agenda for February 2021. Request for approval of consent agenda. Request for approval of board meeting minutes, January 12th, 2021. Request for approval of personnel resignations recommendations. Request for approval of docket of claims, January 2021. Request for approval of student assignments and transfers. Request for enrollment of out-of-district student whose parent is an employee. Request for approval of donations and grants. Request for approval of removal of equipment from inventory and disposal. Request for approval of use facility, Pasco High School Performing Arts Center. Request for use of facility, City of Pascagoula. Request for approval of school calendar 2021-2022. Uh, Request for approval of bid number 541-21, district firewall purchase. Recommendation to award RFP 542-21 for professional development for teachers, administrators, and other district personnel, sheltered English instruction. Request for approval to advertise for proposals to provide online language acquisition using language and mathematics instruction. Request for approval to advertise for proposals of a database software system to track English learners' academic progress and assist with required language service plans. Request for approval of gifted assessment staff. Request for approval of application and certificate of payments. Request for approval of bid 2020 window improvements, Gochi Elementary School, Martin Bluff Elementary School, and Trent Lott Academy Project. Request for approval 2021 athletic supplements. Request for approval of assistant superintendents and principals for 2021-2022 school year. Okay. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Uh, are there any items that any board member would like to see removed from the consent agenda and considered separately? 
Hearing none, we'll entertain a motion on the consent agenda. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Not second. Okay. Motion and second on the consent agenda. Is there any discussion on any of these items? No discussion. Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. And there are none. Moving into item 3A, request for approval for use of facility. It is requested that the attached contract between Merchant Marine Bank and Pasco Gotche School District Board of Trustees for use of Pasco High School Performing Arts Center for, of March 30th and April 1st, 2021 be approved to, for delivery to Merchants Marine Bank. Contract has been reviewed by the district attorney and meets the guidelines set forth by the board regarding all safety and security protocols, including for COVID-19. Uh, a quote was provided to Merchants Marine Bank based on the city limits corporate flat rate pricing is attached. As recommended, Board of Trustees approve this request for Merchants Marine Bank. Okay, yep. and if you guys remember, this was one that we had to carry over from a previous meeting. There were a couple of details being ironed out, some, some questions we had. Those have been answered uh, and, and sent to us now. So we had that, that data um, just so we make sure decisions are informed, right? Um, so you, we've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Um, we'll entertain a motion on that item. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. We have a second. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. And there are none. Item B, request for approval to advertise and accept bid on restroom improvement project. The administration has determined a need for renovations for 2021 restroom improvements project. The scope of the project will include Goche High School and Path School High School and the College of Career Technical Institute, CCTI. It will involve renovation of all restrooms and replace all existing drinking fountains with new drinking fountain bottle filter combination units. Mr. Ryan Florich. JBHM Architect has requested authorization to proceed with additional services required for the project to be advertised and bid. The budget costs are estimated between 2.4 and 2.5 million plus the 6% architect fee. Bids will be presented at a later date for board approval. It is recommended the Board of Trustees approve to advertise and accept bids for the 2021 Restroom Improvements Project. Okay. I heard the superintendent's recommendation. Do we have a motion on this item? So moved. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Right. Second. Any discussion on the item? Can't let you get away that easy. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> when we, and he may need a microphone if there's one that we can get out there to him. So we look, that's, um, you know, to those that are watching this uh, via a live stream, um, joining remotely, you know, we look at restroom improvements and we see a, a number like that and you say wow that's a big number um, but but understanding the size and scope I guess is what I want to bring a little clarity to and superintendent you could probably the first piece of this when we look at the high schools and we look at the CCTI on the average the age of these facilities since last renovation yeah well since they were built uh, the fixtures are the same they're over two decades old and all the facilities the ones at CCTI are a little older and it's only upstairs. We've already completed all the downstairs renovations there. And there'll also be a part to redo, um, potentially redo an additional area uh, around the gym bathroom areas as well. The, not, not the bathroom areas, but the uh, re dressing room areas. Gotcha. So that'll all be part of it. Showers won't be as big a part of it, but the restroom renovations will be. And uh, Mr. Flourish can uh, explain that in more depth. Yeah, this really moving here, we look and we've got a lot of old, very mechanical fixtures in place in these facilities. And I assume during this renovation, this upgrade, we're going to go to uh, a lot more technologically advanced units there. And I guess just a little blurb from you when we look at investment up front, um, just what it is uh, not only for sanitation, because it does increase there, but uh, just long-term maintenance, the cost of, of operation and things it does prove to be beneficial when we have these, these newer units in-house, correct? That's correct. 
So again, one of those things that it, it takes a second, but I believe it pays itself off. And again, I think we've, we've talked about it as a board many, many times. Um, when you give students nice facilities, they tend to take care of them more, you know. Um, and so, yeah, do we have the possibility of, of expanding the project outside of that scope? Um, just a little color around what that might look like. Can you expand on that? I'm not sure I understand the question as far as expanding the project scope. So is there like an ad alternate attached to the? Yeah. There and is. and so, what would so, that entail, I guess, is my question. Yeah, just, just to clarify, the base bid is, is both the high schools, all the bathrooms in the school, except for the gym areas, essentially. Okay. There's, there's an ad alternate to add the locker room restrooms um, to the project. Hopefully we get a good price um, on that. And then the other ad alternate is to add all the work at the CCTI. So the, the primary project is all the restrooms at both high schools. And again, an add on to do the CCTI, second floor restrooms, which are the only remaining restrooms to be renovated. And then, you know, to add the locker rooms at both the high schools as well. Perfect. Thank you. Um, any further discussion from other board members? No. Hi. Hearing none, uh, all in favor of the recommendation signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Opposed by like sign. And there are none. Okay. Then we have 3C, advertise and accept bid uh, for the parking improvement project. The administration has determined the need for renovations for Central Elementary School and Pasco High School parking improvements project. The scope of the project will include parking lot expansions, site preparation, drainage improvements, concrete wheel stops, and striping. Mr. Ron Florick, JBHM Architect, has requested authorization to proceed with additional services required for these projects, advertised and bid. The budgeted costs are estimated between $220,000 and $242,000, plus 6% architect fee. Bids will be presented at a later date for board approval. It's recommended board of trustees approve to advertise and accept the bids for Central Elementary School and Pasco High School parking improvements project. You've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion on the item? So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion on that item? And I guess for my clarity, uh, it appears to be when we look in the direction of Pascagoula High School, a good deal of that improvement's gonna be around the softball field area on the back side there to provide parking for that. Yeah, because we've had the expansion um, there and the field looks great now. Um, if you hadn't seen the, the girls' softball field since the scoreboard and the upgrades there, you should really ride by. But uh, with improvements that have been made here uh, by the city, that's one place we found ourselves lacking um, is parking for those events, right? And I think on those nights where we have an event here, there's ball being played by the city and, and the girls have a game and the boys have a game, it's gonna get congested in a hurry. Um, and so we, I saw everything I, I needed to see when we talked drainage improvements. Um, so is there any other questions by any other board members? Hearing none, all in favor of the recommendation, please signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed by like sign. There none. Um, going on to 4A is our informational reports. And we have those there. Um, and see that uh, just a very, very minor uh, damage report with a broken window at at one of our schools, uh, if that's all we've had for, for the month. You know, don't want to see any, but that's not, not bad. And then we have the, the discipline report as well. Uh, is there any questions from any board member on the vandalism report, discipline report? Then you see the construction update attached as well. Um, does any board member have any questions around the construction update. Please. 
Okay, and this is uh, uh, Dr. Ketching's realm here uh, and Ms. Grins, but we are looking at a substantial amount of money uh, in stimulus funding. And some of these renovations that we have proposed for future projects could potentially come from that. We have to wait for clearance for that to occur. But we just, I know that you can see some very ambitious plans in there, but those are uh, based on the opportunity to use some of this money to renovate air systems in schools. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, the water fountains that we're working on, the same way that we'll be, and we're actually going to go out for another round of the water fountains as soon as we find out the availability of those water fountains, because not only Pasco Goche School District is looking for those water fountains, but everybody who has a school in the country is looking for those water fountains now. Sure. So there's a great demand on that. So we're going to act pretty quickly with it. But uh, some of these things may be installed at a later date in the event that we can't get them uh, on site uh, during the contract time. Thank you for that. And yeah, I knew we had to be in pretty good shape when we start talking projects and numbers. Um, that magnitude and scope, I kind of keep a glance at Miss Grin, and if her if her face doesn't match the the blouse that she's wearing this evening, I figure that we're okay. Um, and if we're not, I would be able to see that on her eyes, and we ask those questions. Um, but on the solar improvement, look like first round of advertisement going to take place later this month. That's Ryan? correct. That's that's right. Same same with the roofing project that relates to that. So okay. we'll kind of run those bidding processes parallel. Okay, excellent. Um, excited about that that project and partnership, what it can bring to the district. Um, any other board members have any questions on the construction update? Okay. Going on to four B or monthly financial reports. We've had this information to to review. Does any board member have any questions? regarding the financial reports for the month of February. Okay. Here and then we'll move on to item 5A as amended. Um, as board member Cleon Irving uh, added a spot wanting to talk about uh, dress code policy. Yeah, um, I just want to start this discussion uh, with the board and just kind of start getting feedback on that. Um, I thought this was a good time. Uh, I've received correspondence. We've been receiving correspondence for handbook revisions. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think it was a better time than now to probably start doing the discussions. You know, um, right now I've, I've thought about it um, repeatedly and I've never been passionately for or against, but I think it's probably the time um, to maybe remove the mandatory dress code policy. And, and, and in my mind, I'm thinking of a phased approach to like secondary, um, starting with secondary, see how it goes for the secondary um, group. Um, you know, like I say, it's, it's, been, it's been on my mind for a while. And I, as a parent um, of a student, you know, I, I've actually been, um, Debating it. I mean, I've like I said, I've never been passionately opposed or for it. I mean, we go out there and do the rules, and I'm actually a byproduct of both. I I went 11 years of school, and my senior year, the district. That's when the district changed and went the uniform. So I've been a byproduct of no school uniforms, wearing school uniforms, and I and I understand the premise of why um, some of the reasons why we went there. Um, but I, I, I just think it's time, you know, for, you know, like I say, starting with the, with the high school, secondary, um, I guess, to um, start venturing off and kind of showing some individuality in, in some of the things they do. I mean, it's going to come with constraints as well. Um, I think we're still going to have to have the constraints as like, we're not sagging we, just like we have in our handbook today, no big belts and everything else. But being able to just, you know, express yourself through your own um, – dress dress and dress the way you want to actually dress um don't think it affects you know i've read all these different studies and it's always a counter argument to every argument it's mm -hmm. an argument it's an argument on one side um saying that the kids learn better because they in school uniforms but it's a counter argument to that and the ones that's 
uniform dressing out of uniform, it's always a kind of argument. So it's not that right answer. Um, I don't see no one coming up with the right answer anytime soon, but I do want to discuss, you know, maybe the phase approach. We go that what we go that route. If things are not good um, as a board, we always could come back to the table and and change it. But as just my opinion, um, I think during this pandemic, I, I'm starting to see a lot of parents. Um, it gets expensive. Um, I, I actually get one of them. You still you buy uniform, you still have to buy normal clothes for your kids. So. Um, I, I can see an issue with some parents, you know, but that's just my thoughts and um, wanted to get the feedback and thoughts from board members, superintendent and everyone else and be able to try to move forward with if we come up with a decision, you know, within the next month so we can actually update handbooks or feel like we want to feel going forward. All right. Understood. Um Understanding the timeline that we're going to be looking at, is there any way um, that we could possibly look at some potential dates for work session, a, a different evening to sit down and, and have a session as a board just to, to go through that and, and what that might look like, Dr. Rodolfich? Or say, could we, if we could get some dates together and then. Um, uh, okay, we want to, at the 22nd, we can, yeah, we can add it to that one. You're right. Okay, good. And then, please, uh, members of the board, leadership team, you know, bring those thoughts together, bring that data together, and, and everybody sit down and and give those thoughts and, and present. Well, we've got time to, to have that discussion. If we leave with a few questions, we can, we can get those questions answered uh, before it be time to, to act on it. Um, and sorry, further comment uh, on Mr. Irvin's statement request? Okay, so in the 22nd, we have the board work session. If we can get that as a as a line item for discussion on that that work session. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now um, we entertain a motion to close the meeting to determine executive session uh, for exceptions to board policy that we will examine to see if they meet the requirements for executive session. Uh, is there a motion? There. So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed by like sign. And there are none. So again, at this time, we will close the meeting to determine these items fit for executive session. <laughs>